lives of those we serve. We open our eyes to the hungry and see the faces of Christ as we nourish your Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to the cathedral on this fifth Sunday of Lent. At the fifth Sunday of Lent, our journey towards Easter takes a turn. And we see in the readings the Lord's fear, his trembling, begins to set in as he approaches the, the, uh, the terror of the cross. And so we in our journey with him acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, to you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I, I have, have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my, my most grievous fault, fault Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, O Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Ah, 
From the letter to the Hebrews. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has now come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat 
falls to the ground and dies. It remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loses his life, whoever loves his life, loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honour whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said to one another, It is thunder. But others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered them, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. And now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not sure Jesus was an expert on plant biology, but he certainly knew and observed the world around him with a keen eye. For example, in today's gospel, he takes an everyday reality, something that is slowly and silently happening day and night right under our noses, and he uses it to describe the horror of what was about to happen to him. If you've ever dug up a seed while it's still germinating, you'll see in some seeds that they become split and torn apart in the process as the root begins to come forth further into the soil. When a wheat seed is planted, it begins to absorb the moisture of the soil and the little embryo that is inside the seed begins to expand until the seed case, the outer shell of the seed, is ruptured in order for the living embryo to come forth. It's interesting, in today's Gospel, Jesus' words, he didn't actually say, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies. In the Greek text of, of the Gospel, which is the original, there is a definite article used, which means, he says, unless the grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies. So he's not giving a commentary on plant life. He's pointing out what is about to happen to him in particular. Unless the grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies. Who is the grain of wheat? Jesus is the grain of wheat. And he's about to fall into the earth when he's buried in the tomb. And there, as his body lies dormant, after having his flesh ruptured and pierced by the scourging, the nails, the crown of thorns, the spear in his side, his flesh torn apart, the divine life which is in him expands and it breaks forth like the dawn early on Easter Sunday morning. Jesus has been broken for our sake. His flesh ruptured on the cross becomes the means by which his divine nature is implanted into our world. And it doesn't end there. The inner life of that single grain of wheat, having now come forth for the world to see, we know produces many other grains. Seeds just like itself by grace. That's us. 
seeds that will in turn be ground down into flour so that together we form the bread which is transformed into the risen body of Christ through his grace. But my friends, our participation in his divine life implies that we too must go through this process of being pierced. Perhaps in our case though, since we don't share his divine life by nature, we need to be ruptured not to let the divine life out, but to let it in, so that through the cracks the light of the Holy Spirit may come streaming into the darkness of our lives. And for this reason, the Christian must never shy away from suffering. We shouldn't go looking for it either. And we don't need to because it comes our way in life. But we aren't to take the world's approach in cursing suffering, in doing everything possible to try and avoid it at all costs. Jesus condemns this approach. He says, those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And why is that? It's because whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am there my servant must be also. We must follow what Jesus did. Now this language of loving and hating one's life must be understood in its correct context. It doesn't refer to the passionate emotions that we, we think of when we talk about loving and hating. In the Hebrew mindset, to love one thing and hate the other was to have preference, to desire one thing over the other. To hate your life in this world is not to despise and curse the day of your birth. It's not to get around with low self-esteem and wish you were dead. Rather, what Jesus is suggesting is that we ought not cling to this life, that we shouldn't at all costs try to preserve our comfort, lest we remain inert, dried up, self-contained and hardened grains of wheat. Now here's the irony in today's, in Jesus' speech. When a seed is sown, it doesn't actually die at all. Rather, the life that is within the seed is activated, it sprouts forth. But it is the seed that is never sown that remains as it is, the seed that is never ruptured by the process of germination, eventually becomes inviable, it dies. So why do we suffer? I don't know the answer, but perhaps it's because we need to. Perhaps we need to be broken open, not so that the divine life may get out, as in the case of Jesus, but so that the divine life may get in, so that we may learn who we are, beloved dust, and who God is, the only absolute. My dear brothers and sisters, we are moving now into the final two weeks of Lent, and today marks a definitive shift, as I said earlier. This period was traditionally referred to as Passion Tide, the time in which Jesus' passion his suffering begins. It doesn't begin on the cross, it begins in the approach of the cross. And the gospel today gives us a glimpse of this reality when his grave speech admits of dread and fear of the bitter chalice that he was about to drink. It's a kind of Gethsemane moment where we see his humanity, his weakness, just like our own, when we are faced with our suffering. And yet, Jesus continued on. He did it afraid. And this is the definition of courage. Let us therefore taste something of this dread and this fear, having compassion for him, and walking with Jesus over these last weeks of Lent, as his anguish increases, so that we might enter into the fullness of the mystery of the cross at Easter, 
and therefore his resurrection. May we hold up to our anguishes with his, learning to obey through suffering, as the writer to the Hebrews puts it in our second reading. My friends, it is through the cracks that the light comes streaming in. Let's stand now and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand hand of God, God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As Jesus' hour of trial comes into sight, let us unite ourselves with him and pray for our needs and the needs of all the world. For all who keep covenant with the one true God, may they form communities of faithful love at the service of the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to brutality and oppression, may nations and leaders everywhere drink from the fountain of God's mercy present in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from any form of discrimination, may they be treated with the respect and dignity that they rightfully deserve. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parents of adolescents, may they be wise guides for their children's journey to sexual maturity. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For Rohingya women and children in refugee camps in Bangladesh, may our support for Project Compassion bring them safer and healthier living conditions. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the recently deceased, Biddy, Rose, and those who have died from COVID-19. And for all those whose anniversaries occur around this time, may all who have lost their lives in this world be raised up to eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Holy Father, you raised your Son to the glory of the cross. Give us the courage to follow in his footsteps. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Father, mystery. 
this water and wine when we come to share in the divinity of Christ and humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who Foremost merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, 
especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your most holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, 
and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And just before the final blessing, a couple of notices that um, Easter is soon approaching and in order to uh, uh, fulfill all of the requirements for the Easter ceremonies, we do need uh, people to perform liturgical ministries. So if there are people available for things such as, as reading, um, uh, I can't think of what else we need at the moment, but there is a, a book uh, in which you can sign up to help out with those Easter ceremonies. Uh, and a reminder that once the building starts over here uh, on the presbytery, there won't be any more parking on the grass here. So you'll have to park behind the cathedral uh, or next door at the Catholic school's office. The exception is uh, disabled parking, of course. The Lord be with you. And with your, and with spirit. your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. 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 with you.